was just great. That was so great. <laughs> Martin said, do you want something quiet and soft or something really up charge? I said, go for it. And you surely did. Thank you. You know, with the wind yesterday, the grass is flowing and everything moving. That was just a perfect, perfect. And having grown up in Ohio in the cornfields in the wind, just like dancing. Oh, very, very nice. All right. Well, welcome. Glad you're here. Glad you're here. The topic is your invisible forces. The invisible force in that music is what you feel, the, the tempo, the beautiful sound. We as human beings are rooted in this invisible force, this in, an infinite intelligence we call God. It's really, to me, it's big energy. God as energy is this invisible force that responds to us in many ways. We also call it divine power. And in the book Living the Science of Mind, Ernest Holmes challenges us to honestly look at our life and look at how happy we are with our life experience. And he always talks about the four areas of our life experience, our relationships, our abundance, wealth, our work, and our health, the four major areas. So this is all about looking at those areas today because the invisible forces that surround us and that are moved by the power of our mind impact all those four areas. And he says, if there's any place in any of those areas that you would like to improve, it starts with improving your faith that those forces are at work. He said, just like all the plants on the planet, all the trees, all the grasses, all the flowers, they're rooted in the earth. We're rooted in the same way, but as human beings, we have a mind that interacts with those forces, with that energy. And we know it because we look around our life and we see the results of that. Holmes invited me, uh, as I was reading his work this week, to think about trees as a real good example of invisible forces at work. And if you, in the spring, if you have seen the cherry tree behind the sanctuary in full bloom, beautiful pink is those flowers over there. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Just takes your breath away. And when it's covered in those pink blossoms, I, I start to think about the roots in the ground of that tree. Because in order to have blossoms, it needs nutrients. It needs water. And it needs things like nitrogen, carbon dioxide that it gets from the air. And it needs to have photosynthesis so that the plants grow, so that the leaves grow, the flowers grow. And it gets that from the sunlight. So there's all these forces that you don't see that make such a beautiful tree. It's invisible. But if any one of those were not present, it wouldn't be a very pretty tree. And that's why Jesus said, consider the lilies of the field and how they grow. They neither toil nor do they spin. And yet I say unto you, uh, Solomon in his, all his glory was not arrayed like one of these because the lilies of the field exist because of these invisible forces. It's one thing to have a seed and plant it, but if it's not watered, it's not going to grow. And so just like a forest and just like the lilies, the key is not worrying about it because worrying is a negative energy that impresses those forests. Holmes uh, explained that at one time he met the most famous cartoonist in the country. I don't read the comics too often, but it's, it's a real skill to do a comic strip, <laughs> a, car, a cartoonist work. And the nature of their work is to produce new ideas every day because they go into these newspapers all over the country and millions of people read them. So it's interesting to come up with something new every day. So when he met this cartoonist, he said, how do you do that? How do you make something new every day? And he said, well, I have a room in my house and there's nothing on the walls. The only thing in the room is a table, a chair, a piece of paper, and a pencil. And I go in there and I sit. And I sit. 
sometimes for hours at a time. And I just listen. And all of a sudden, the thought goes, whoosh. I go, wow, that's, that's an interesting thought. And then here comes another one. And all of a sudden, a couple more. And he said, all of a sudden, I see a storyline starting to develop. And I write it all down. But intense listening. He didn't worry. He didn't agonize. He just listened to infinite intelligence. So what about us? Did you ever think what happens when you eat a slice of apple pie, how it can turn into your fingernails growing? I mean, really, your hair growing? How does that work? <laughs> there are invisible forces working in you. We don't have to command it. We don't have to say, okay, grow. We don't have to say, okay, digest it. Make muscles. We don't have to do anything. It's invisible. So here's the question. Is your life as healthy and balanced as this beautiful cherry tree <laughs> that never toils, that doesn't wonder? Am I going to have enough to make a cherry blossom? Is there any place in your life where you think it is less than what you expected? Because if you do, it's time to amp up your faith. Because the invisible forces are at work all the time. We are rooted in them. We are grounded in them. We exist in it. We're swimming in it. So where is your faith regarding that issue in life? Because this power and the power of our mind, consciously or unconsciously, changes our experience, creates our experiences, positively or negatively. If you've watched the news lately, can that negatively impact your thought about life, your thought about the world, your thought about you? And you know, the tree doesn't say, I'm unhappy, I need another branch. But I got so many branches, where am I going to put it? This is absurd. But we do that. <laughs> we will say to ourselves, it's time to have a new something, and we don't know how to get it. Are we, are we unsure about whether we deserve it. We just say, this is what I want my life experience to be, hopefully positive. I have faith that spirit responds to me. I have faith in this infinite intelligence. And I accept what this infinite intelligence uses with my desire for what I want. Now we say that in a format we call spiritual mind treatment. But it's so easy to block that energy. We're letting... Through treatment, we're letting the energy flow through us, flow through us. And it's so easy to block it, like, yeah, that's never going to happen. Did you ever think of that? Yep, that's not going to happen. We short-circuit it with negativity. We short-circuit it if we don't keep reminding ourselves, this is what I want. This is what I know is in process right now through the energy that's here that I'm swimming in through the infinite intelligence flowing through me, and I've planted the seed, and I'm watching for sprouts. I'm looking for sprouts. Little signs that say, ah, something, something's growing. As Michael Beckwith always says, energy flows where our attention goes. And that's why I decided to have this class this summer called Prosperity Plus. It's a 10-week class. For a summer class, that's very long but it's very powerful. It was written by a lady, Mary Morrissey, who has gained and lost millions of dollars in her life. And she really has prosperity down extremely well. And so we watched the DVD, first class, and here's the first thing she said. Our world is governed by invisible laws, if you haven't heard that before. These are laws such as gravity, electricity, aerodynamics. And they're always at work. And when we learn how they work, then we can use those. Like the law of electricity, you can now turn on a light switch and you have full faith and conviction that it's going to work. When you get in an airplane, you have full faith and conviction that the law of thermodynamics, the way the airplane is designed, it is going to lift and fly you to your destination. 
And so the people that discovered how to use it are just like you. They were open. They probably went in a, a shed or someplace and sat on a stool and just thought about it, or not thought about it, but just let thoughts come and go. Aha, aha, I see a bigger idea. Uh, Mary Morrissey read a quote by Thomas Edison that I think I have not heard before, and so I want to share it with you. Edison said, I know this world is ruled by infinite intelligence. <laughs> Everything that surrounds us, everything that exists, proves that there are infinite laws behind it. There can be no denying this fact. It is mathematical in its precision. Think of that, mathematical. It's mathematical in its pre precision. So if a healthy cherry tree gets the X percent of water it needs, the nutrients, the nitrogen, the carbon dioxide, the sunlight, blah, blah, blah. If it gets that right mix, mathematically, it will produce a fabulous, fabulous tree. And if any one of those is off by any certain amount, you'll get a, a very interesting looking tree. Anybody a master gardener in here? Anybody? Anybody garden? Oh, good, good. Because a master gardener, has been trained to look at a plant and look at it and go, wow, those yellow leaves mean X, Y, Z, or uh, the, the flower that's drooping means this or whatever. So they, they determine what that plant needs to be healthier because it's a mathematical solution. I read on the internet yesterday that this year, three billion people are planting a garden and nine out of 10 of those people are gonna to plant tomatoes. Now that's a lot of tomato plants. That's a lot of tomato plants. And if they have any experience like mine in growing tomatoes, they are gonna be frustrated. There's no doubt about it because there are invisible forces at work that I couldn't see, but I saw the results of what I wasn't doing right. And you know, I. I'm a fairly smart person, and I think back then, why didn't I go get a book on how to grow tomatoes? <laughs> I don't know why. I just, I just let you plant a seed, you water it, it grows. Hey, tomatoes, wonderful. So I'm always baffled by things that don't look like they should in the book. So yesterday I Googled problems with tomato plants. And it said, here's the top 20. So you know there's a whole lot more. A whole lot more. And I thought I'd share them with you because it's all this invisible stuff going on. If the blossoms fall off without developing a tomato, the problem could be wide, wide temperature fluctuations. Well, of course there's temperature fluctuations. I mean, it, this is, you know, cool at night, hot in the day. I don't know what's perfect for tomatoes. What do you do, cover them up? I don't know in the summer, it's kind of weird. It could be insect damage, it could be a lack of water, or it could be nitrogen imbalance. How would I know that? I have no idea how you would know that. If the tomato skin develops cracks as it grows, you know, they get big and they get these little cracks, the problem is too little water followed by too much water. That's, it's, it's in, it's Google. I mean, you got to believe it. Holy cow, how would I know that? If the tomato develops yellow patches on the red skin, the problem is, I'd love to know if you know this because I had no idea, too much sun. The sun scalded the tomato skin. Now, I thought tomatoes loved sun. How would I know that? If you've ever cut open a tomato and it kind of has holes in it where it's like, where's the meat? little pockets of holes. The problem was either lack of fertilization, poor soil, or inadequate pollination. How would you know that? You bought the plant, or maybe you did it from a seed, but how many seeds does it take to pollinate it? I don't know. If you buy it at the store, you're assuming that already took place and somebody is Somebody, something. So those are just the four top 20 po uh, 
problems with tomatoes. And you get the idea there are these, these invisible forces at work. So when, a couple years after I came to Reading, I built a house up in Sunset, um, out there anyway, built a really nice house and I had this little piece of ground next to the house and I thought, I'm gonna have a garden. I'm an Ohio girl, I'm gonna plant some corn. I gave up on tomatoes, but I thought corn has got to be easy. There are millions of acres of corn around the country. So I planted four rows, or no, two rows of corn. And when it grew, I cut the corn off and opened the husk, and it looked really weird. Some kernels were big, some were small, some were almost minuscule, and then there were spaces where there was no kernel at all. So, I came in, I brought my corn in to Francis Bliley. Francis and Harry were great gardeners. I said, Francis, please tell me what's wrong with this corn. And she said, Mary, your corn has a sex problem. <laughs> I went, in my yard? I mean, how do you have a sex problem in my yard? She said, you always grow more than four rows of corn. They have to pollinate. And so two rows just weren't good enough. So we had a good laugh, and um, I learned a little bit about growing corn. Haven't done it since. And after the first service, someone came up to me and said, oh, yeah, I grew up in Iowa. I used to be a, a, a silk puller and corn. When they didn't want it to cross-pollinate, a bunch of us were ordered to go out in the field and pull the silk out because every one of those silks is attached to one kernel of corn. Now, so I learned a lot this morning. That was really amazing. So anyway, I was stymied by my lack of knowledge, but we had a good laugh with Frances. She was always up for good advice. So in Prosperity Plus, Mary Morris, Morrissey says, the beliefs it's time to look at the beliefs we hold today that are not serving us. What beliefs do you have about relationships, work, abundance, health, that are not serving you? Think about it like you're growing corn in your life or tomatoes. What areas can be improved? What are your beliefs about relationships? Because often when we get a divorce, if you ever have had that experience, we're a little leery jumping into the next one. And, and every time, like even going from one job to another, what beliefs am I taking with me that didn't serve me then that I might be repeating or allowing to exist in our mind? And she said, here's the deal. Think about what you love about those four areas. What do you deeply love about being in a relationship? What do you love about being in a good job? What do you love about having lots of bucks in, the, in your pocket or in your purse? What do you love about feeling healthy? How does that feel, that feeling of love? How does that feel? It felt a little overwhelming to the people in my class, like, holy cow, I haven't thought about that. I said, well, maybe start with one day. Write down your perfect day. Who's there? Who isn't? What do you smell? Where are you? Did you go out? Did you stay in? Did you, are you on the beach? Uh, what is it about a perfect day that you just feel it in your, in your bones? You know this is a wonderful, wonderful day. And then after you're done with that, look at what piece of that is relationship. Chances are there's another person there in that perfect day. What is it about creativity? What is it about are you going to a fabulous restaurant about abundance? What is it about... Uh, your work or what you like to do that you're sharing with people. And that might be a way to find out what you really love in those four areas of life. And when you discover that, visualize it, feel it, write it down, make a collage of pictures, focus on it, because what your where your attention goes, your energy flows, and like energy is attracted back to it. So that was just the first class of Prosperity Plus. We're really excited about it because now in the next class, next Thursday, I'm going to be asking, what is sprouting in your life? What are the little sprouts that are showing up that may 
be an indicator that you're really on the right track with what you're focused on and what you love. Because truly all things are possible. I know when I came here and found this church and I was divorced after 21 years and I thought, I was talking to Lawana, uh, she was a practitioner, and she said, how's your love life? Oh, hey, I, I don't care if I ever get married or meet anybody, I'm, I'm just totally fine. She said, no, you need a goddamn it treatment to find a relationship. And that was true. I was so, I was not, I was not going to look at that. I was not going to look at relationship. But that's not our nature. Our nature is to love. Our nature is to share. Our nature is to be with other people. And so she did this treatment and it just unlocked my heart. And a week later, I found my soulmate sitting here in this sanctuary. And it was, it was just so wonderful. So I know it works. So I believe as well as Mary Morrissey believes, that you ought to have a little better opinion about yourself. A little better opinion about yourself. A little better opinion about the expectations in your life. I know as we get older, I was at three memorials this week, and it's like, am I done? <laughs> Is there anything else I really should have or need or want? You know, before, there I go. I'm thinking about that. I'm really thinking about that. Where am I in these areas of life? Because we need to be receptive to it, state what it is that we want to experience, focus on it, put energy into it, and a practitioner can help you do a very strong spiritual mind treatment or a form of affirmative prayer on that. Energy at work for a greater life. You know, I love this story about Holmes and the cartoonists because um, every other week I get to write a Sunday talk. And you think, oh, that must be fun. <laughs> I love to give it, but the process of putting it together is amazing. I start on Wednesday because Home Office gives us a title and they give us a couple quotes, and I start just thinking, pondering, and writing, and... and um, I'm in my room, in, in my office, sitting at my desk with my computer, thank God, not just a piece of paper. And I have all my library books, all the books in my library behind me, and sometimes nothing happens. And so I go out and talk to Paul or do something to stimulate the creativity that I know is there because God created all of it. All knowledge is known in the universe. I just need 30-minute 30, 30 tidbits here to, to make this happen. So I sit down and I finally, on Thursday, say, okay, God, it's time. Come on. Got to write a 30-minute talk. It needs to be organized. You need to be able to understand it. Probably have to add a couple laughs to it. Need a, a good closing. It needs to be awesome. Just come on. And honest to God, it works. It really does. And then Friday, I'm like, oh, my God, this is the worst stuff I ever wrote. I have to, I have to rewrite it. And I'm crossing out paragraphs and getting out more books. And, and Saturday, I get up and I go, holy mackerel, there's only 24 hours left before I have to give this talk. Now, holy mackerel is an Ohio term if you didn't know it. <laughs> but it, when I say things like that, it kind of short circuits things. When I'm getting into fear, it short circuits the ideas. You know, uncertainty closes in. Am I really going to do it? Maybe they wouldn't mind if it was only 20 minutes. <laughs> and the problem is the title of the talk. If I didn't have that title, I could probably come up with some really cool ideas. So then I have to laugh about it. I just have to laugh because it's only me blocking my own creativity and allowing the creativity of infinite intelligence to flow. So my goal this morning is when you have those holy mackerel moments, you have to laugh. And you have to be open and say, just come on, come on. Ideas, things, people, places, whatever. Be open. Be totally open to it. Because this invisible force that makes the plants grow and the tomatoes look really healthy because we know what to do with them or we know who to call or whatever, um, they're there. And the knowledge is there if we're ready to apply it. 
So the spiritual wisdom is already within you, all around you, and for you. So let's do a prayer about that. And this morning we'll sow seeds of infinite creativity because even a good relationship needs some creativity, just as a job, just as, as a healthy body. All these things that make up life benefit from creativity. Maybe it's not yoga, but it's Tai Chi. Maybe it's running, not walking. Maybe it's, I don't know, whatever it is. There's an intelligence out there, an invisible force that knows and it's for us, always for us, because we're its creation. If we weren't here, we didn't need to be here, but we are here. And every day we are here, there's a higher purpose. There are invisible forces at work in your life that you can be so grateful for. Perfect digestion, heartbeat, hair <laughs> in the right places. All these things we are being blessed with. And when we celebrate it and say, you know, God, I'm, I recognize I'm part of this, and we tap into that, life is so much happier, beautiful, comfortable, comfortable. We can trust the universe always. So whatever seeds we're planting, let them be positive seeds. Let them be seeds of love, joy, peace, beauty. And as we plant those seeds and shower those seeds with love, it blossoms into a more beautiful, happier life. So I give great thanks for the wisdom, for the knowledge that I will know now, what's the next step in this process to get where I feel comfortable and loved and happy? And then do it, having the courage to do it. So in gratitude now, I know the truth. I know how to do it. Now I let go of any worry and swim in it. Be at one with it. And it will be beautiful. And so it is. Thank you.